some tests, the results of this assessment should be interpreted with caution. How can an evaluator ask a CPSC administrator to interpret the results with caution? How is that the administrator's job? That's what the evaluator is being paid for. In fact, I used to say to the state, look, if you're going to require these scores, then do this. Just give me three days with community college graduates. I'll teach them what they need to know for preschool assessment to give, to, you know, to get, to give right or wrong. Is this a baby? Is this not a baby? Can you do the puzzle? You can't do the puzzle. Can you name this color? You can't name this color. I'll give them, they can, I show them how to say whether this, the answer was right or wrong. Not easy, not hard at all. So they're very reliable, highly reliable, remember. And then I will show them how to get the, you know, go just in the back of the book, you go from raw score to standard score. And then look, if it's a 77 or, a, or less, it's a 25% delay. If it's a 70 or less, it's a 33% delay, right? That's, you got that? I could do that in three days. We get rid of all the assessment. And I'm not just psychology, psych, speech, ed evaluators, OTs, get rid of the whole thing. Turn that money into better preschools. But the answer is evaluators are given, need a master's and a doctorate and or a doctorate to do this work because they have to be able, be able to interpret information that they acquire. They have to know how to get the information and how to interpret it. So any, any evaluator who writes, you interpret with caution, I would say to anybody who gets those evals, turn it back. That's your job. That's the job of the evaluator. Think about House, if any of you watch, watch House on TV. He's a brilliant diagnostician. And I, went actually, I actually assigned my assessment and evaluation class at Teachers College Columbia that this week they have to watch House. And then they have to tell me what makes her him a brilliant diagnostician. So you could do that too if you want to. We're going to think about a little bit about what do we know, whether it's normal, development or it's a disability that needs help and there's a lot of information on this. Um, I'm actually going to let you read this about um, how do you know whether a kid's typically developing or not. This is the Allswang, Rodriguez and Timler article from 1998. So let's see, one of the things is, because we, you know, if a kid gets, ha has a disability, we want to get them services. If they don't, we want them to be out with other kids having fun. Not that therapy is not fun, but not so much. So we want to know whether the comprehension skills are age appropriate. If they can't produce two word utterances, can they imitate two word utterances? Do they do representational play? Do they use a lot of gestures? Can they, can they use, do they, if they're using single words, do they use gestures and intonations to enhance their communication? Do they have good social skills? Are they, leader, are they leaders with their peers? What's the phonological development? Is it limited or is it robust? Those are the kinds, that's the kind of data, the kind of research we need to know in order to know whether a child has a disability or is just on the wide range of normal, a little slower on the right, wide range of normal. But they will catch up. An evaluator has to have the knowledge and skills to know what data is relevant and valid and how to gather that data. You have to know how to think about the particular background that the child brings to the evaluation. So you see whether they've acquired information that they should rather than what the test thinks they should. Okay. The most important question is, who is this child? Because if we know who this child is, then we know what they brought in. Then we have a really good idea of what they brought in to the evaluation. I think that we have to be detectives and anthropologists, cultural anthropologists, thinking about culture, and detectives problem solving, making inferences, trying to figure out what happened here. Are there a number of suspects? Is there just one? How do we get to the information? What information do we need? How do we get to the bottom of this? That's what our job is as evaluators. It's not to pull out a test and say, show me red, show me blue. Where's your eyes, nose, mouth? That's not an evaluation. What does IDEA require? Oh, this is the hard part of IDEA. This is the really hard part. You can't identify a child as having a disability if the determinant factor is lack of adequate instruction in reading, lack of adequate instruction in math, 
or limited English proficiency. And when you think about lack of adequate instruction in reading as per a preschooler, you're going to be thinking, were they exposed to books? Have they been exposed to letters? Have they been exposed to uh, stories? Have they been the one that takes the lead in telling a story? Uh, math, all, none, the rest, have they been exposed to that kind? Because some cultures do that on a regular basis and some don't. And limited English proficiency, which you've talked about. This is really hard. This is, requires high level clinical judgment, high level of understanding the research, and a high level of understanding really what, how are you going to make that determination between a disability and something else. It is really, really challenging. But we're challenged by the federal law. We're challenged by the federal law. And we've got to meet that challenge. Why? You've got to think of every child you evaluate. Your determination is going to have a huge impact on that child's future. You're a little PLS, or you're a little real, or you're a little whipsy, or you're a little daisy, or you're a little Sanford Benet, you're a little Bailey. Thinking that you just do that, you close the lights on that child's future.